Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the opportunity to update you, uh, not just on, on operation at Atalanta, but also strategy uh, and operations in the Horn of Africa. Uh, I think it's first worth saying that Somalia, and by extension, the wider Horn of Africa, is one of our high representatives and the external action services uh, highest priorities uh, in the area. Uh, and you've most probably picked up a sense of that already today. I think this was recognized uh, very forcefully within the European Union last year. Uh, and in particular, th there was a greater need for coordination and synchronization of uh, European Union activity, uh, but also nested within all the other global activity that was going on in the region. And that resulted at the end of last year in the European Union adopting a framework <coughs> strategy for the Horn of Africa. Um, I would say certainly those who are, who are used to a military strategy, it didn't quite do the matching ends, ways and means. Uh, it was much more policy focused, but did, did focus on what has been done and what was planned for the future. But the key thing that it did within the European Union was uh, act as a focus and a galvanizing force uh, for all the levers that are available to the EU. And critically, what followed on from that as well was the appointment of a special representative um, with the personal authority of the high representative to act as a key figure to start drawing together uh, all that activity that the uh, EU is capable of. Uh, now, I spoke to him earlier this week uh, and I asked him if he had to describe uh, the EU's approach to Somalia and how he views it at the moment, uh, what he would say. Uh, and I think he would have a number of points. The first one is that uh, he has spent uh, much of the last three months uh, in, in not only the region, but also within Somalia. Uh, and he, as an experienced uh, Africa hand and diplomat, would recognize that there are distinct opportunities in the next six to eight months. Uh, there, are, there is political progress, there are dynamics on the ground, and there is something that we should seize. There is an immediacy uh, about uh, taking coordinated action. I think he would go as far to say, we talk about the transitional federal government, but he would say the true path to transition will only truly happy when the TFG hands over this summer uh, to something that it is more representative. And, and we need to be alert to that, but also sympathetic uh, and recognize what will work for Somalis. Um, he would also say that uh, the EU is one of the main contributors within the region, has been seen as a bit of a cash cow, but now should be more demanding that that money we put into the region is put to, to best effect. He would also recognize that security and governance are the preconditions for the development that will be needed to turn around this failed state. There is recognition that certainly my mission and everything in the South are but symptoms of a failed state. And at the moment, and previously to now, we have been dealing with symptoms, not the fundamental strategic uh, conditions. Um, he also has an acute sense that what we need to do is bring the right resource to play at the right time in a coordinated way, i.e. what we would identify as a truly comprehensive uh, approach. But he would also recognize that the EU uh, is but one player in here, and we have to work with other players. Um, of course, uh, as we sit here in Washington, the United States, but in particular, the neighborhood, and I'm thinking of the African Union, IGAD, uh, but also other international players, especially from those from the Gulf and Turkey, who can perhaps have an influence and a leverage that we don't necessarily have. So why is the EU potentially so well placed uh, to give meaning to this compre comprehensive approach? I mean, I know this was touched on by Mr. Olaf Skoog in the last panel, um, but of course the European Union has the levers that uh, span the range of effects that we need to bring to bear within Somalia. And just by example, in the period from 2008 to 2013, the EU will be investing some 412 million euros in the region. And that is focused on things such as governance and security, education and economic development. Also from the humanitarian side, in, over the same period, the EU will be investing some 243 million euros. Again, the EU is one of the main contributors 
uh, in the area. Uh, and what the special representative is keen to do is to synchronize that, all that activity with what is being done under CSDP to optimum effect in, in the area. If I can just turn to CSDP, I think there are three key areas that I'll just highlight. The first one is the EU training mission. Uh, it's been running since April 10. It's based in Uganda. And critically, whilst we have a mission out there, the Ugandan Defence Force is also a main player in the training regime uh, that applies there. Uh, to date, some 2,500 troops have been trained. That will be rising to 3,000 by the end of the year. And increasingly, their focus isn't just on training the foot soldiers, but on leadership training for the future leadership of a Somali army, and also train the trainers so the Somalis have a chance of a sustainable army being formed. I, I think it's worth observing that uh, I think everyone recognized now, and in particular Amazon, that those troops are performing well on operations. And the team out there is already looking to the future and how they can move perhaps some of that training into Somalia, into Jazeera camp. The second string I'd talk about is regional maritime capacity building. Um, this is all about developing local capacity within the region. It's a civilian mission and there are two key strands. The first one is developing the neighborhood coast guards, in particular Djibouti, Kenya, Tanzania and Seychelles. But perhaps the most exciting and transformational aspect is the intent to work with the Somalis, initially, initially in Somaliland and Puntland, to train their coastal police force. Remember, for, for piracy, the key capability <coughs> those pirates need is the ability to operate with impunity from the shore. If you take that away, piracy can't flourish. And, and we aim to launch that mission this summer, and that is moving ahead at the moment. And finally, turning to my own mission, Atalanta, um, launched in December 08, now over three years old, we've got three core tasks. The first one uh, is to ensure that World Food Programme and Amazon ships uh, safely arrive in the Horn of Africa and Somalia, and to date we have been 100% successful with that mission. Uh, we have a very strong deter and disruption mission against the Somali pirates, and the last one, is, uh, which is often forgotten, is that we are charged with monitoring fishing activity in the area, which I see as key as persuading the Somalis to take charge of their own natural resources offshore. Uh, and in fact, that what they sometimes cite as the causes of piracy, i.e. the overfishing by the global community, isn't in fact going ahead these days. Um, I think the mission is being a tactical and operational success, and I'll be delighted to take some of those points during questions. But if we were sat here a year ago today, I think we had, uh, well, there were 24 ships held and over 500 hostages. If we sit here today, there are seven ships held and 209 hostages. And that's one of the problems with the different people you talk to. Um, we see things differently from the IMB, who very much rely on what is reported into them by industry, whereas actually through the Maritime Security Center uh, and also our I-Star in the area, um, I would say this, we, we think we have a truer uh, impression of what is going on. So um, I, I would also say some of the statistics bear out that there is a shift as well. In the first six months of last year, 28 ships were successfully pirated. In the latter six months, only three and only four ships and I'm talking about ocean-going trading ships that have a, a ransom that the pirates can raise have, have been seized. What, are the, what has led to this? Well, I'd like to say it's all the EU's uh, uh, creative military force, but there are many factors. The first one is best management practice by industry, uh, and I think industry is taking uh, greater care of itself. I think last year we saw uh, an exponential increase in private armed security teams, uh, and to date, they have been 100% successful uh, in deterring attacks. They usefully provide us datums of where the pirates are so we can get military force on to start rolling up those pirate action groups as well. I think more robust military action has undoubtedly played a part. Um, and and for, for instance, in the first three months of this year, we have taken 13 um, pirate action group motherships out of the game compared with only four during the same period last year. Um, and again, 
I think, the success of cooperation out there. And we work extremely closely at the operational and tactical level, not only with NATO, but also with the US League Coalition Maritime Force. Uh, and I think if ever there was an example uh, of having three different command structures, but an absolutely unity of purpose and effort at the tactical level uh, in, in the real world, this is, this is it. Um, we also plan to expand our mission. Uh, we got a stronger rules of engagement profile last year to take greater disruptive and immobilization effect at sea, and we exploited that. Uh, and also the EU has also agreed uh, a new expansion to our mission to disrupt pirate logistic dumps on the beach as well. And what I see this as is very much an ex expansion of the effects we already do at sea in the anchorages onto the beaches. Um, it's very much in support of all the other lines of operation that the EU is conducting on the governance and security side. One of my watchwords is it's key that we do this with the Somalis, not to the Somalis. And we have been working both with the TFG, Puntland and Galmadug. And, and in fact, the TFG have requested this action, not only of Baroness Ashton, but also Secretary General uh, of the United Nations. The other one, we have very strict go, no-go criteria this. It will be done in uh, strict uh, uh, adherence to the constabulary uh, uh, laws that we are, are, are obliged to operate under. Um, and the key aim is to undermine their business model. It's fundamental to remember that as distinct from Al-Shabaab in the South, this is a criminal economic activity. And with the pressure on them at the moment, we want to increase that pressure to break their business model. The last one, and I know I'm running out of time, is Somali governance and dynamics. There's a lot that is changing there, and we are seeing the tolerance of the Somali people to pirate shifting. However, and in conclusion, I'd say we're only dealing with the symptoms of piracy, not the root causes at the moment, and this needs to change for a truly comprehensive approach from the global community, coupled with a willingness of Somalis to show leadership themselves to take account for their country. All this will be vital. Thank you very much.